Hi, this is Tony Skirsky with Transaction Realty. Thanks for tuning in to one of our positive transaction videos. Today we have Hesh Sagafi from Liberty Home Mortgage Corporation. Thanks for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate the opportunity. I'm excited to answer a few questions and see how we can help. So I, I get asked a lot about uh, loans and I want to make sure that I brought in the expert here to explain some of the questions that I get. And one of the questions I normally get is, what's the difference between a conventional loan and an FHA loan? There's a lot of differences between the two, Tony, but to simplify it ultimately overall, FHA loans are more geared towards people buying homes who have a little money to work with and maybe less than perfect credit. Conventional loans are more seasoned borrowers, more money down, better credit. Those are some of the simple differences between the two. But how much money does a person need to obtain a mortgage? When it comes to purchasing a home, there's basically three pieces of money that they have to concern themselves with. It's the down payment, it's the closing costs, which a lot of times you negotiate the seller to cover those. And then they need some incidentals such as appraisal, home inspection, homeowner's insurance. So usually a few thousand dollars. Does applying for a loan affect anyone's credit? That's it. Question Every time your credit gets pulled naturally, your score goes down. Uh, they generally say it goes down two to five points for every credit pull, but it is required to get a loan. So when it comes to shopping around and comparing different lenders, the easiest thing to do is to get an idea of exactly where your credit is and simply call a few different lenders. Some of the lenders will not answer a question without pulling credit. A lot of lenders will. So you can shop, you can just make some simple phone calls without worrying about too much. Is it prudent for a buyer to go get a pre-approval? A pre-approval is an absolute must because it tells everybody involved in the transaction that it looks like they are financeable. So pre-approvals are absolutely a must. No one wants to waste their time or anyone else's time or money and then later find out that they couldn't qualify. So it gives them an idea actually what they can purchase also. No question about it. It gives them all the boundaries. How much can they go up to? How much money do they need? What are the payments and all those questions they have? And all that's done up front with a pre-approval. It's great to do. Fantastic. What documentation does a buyer need to have with them when they're going for a pre-approval? The basic documents for a pre-approval are the last two years of W-2s, last two years of tax returns, last two months of bank statements, that shows your checking, savings, things like that, and then two recent pay stubs. When you go a little bit more in depth, maybe bankruptcy papers, divorce papers, that comes a little bit later, but that's the basic paperwork that you need to get pre-approved. What qualifications does a buyer have to have nowadays to be able to even consider obtaining a mortgage? To qualify for a mortgage, buyers, it basically what I tell people is it takes three things. It takes credit, it takes income, and it takes money. Credit determines if you can even get a loan. Income determines how big of a loan you can get. And then money, it takes a little bit of money to cover a down payment, closing costs, things like that. So it's credit, income, and money. Does, you need all three of those together or you lose everything. Does debt get involved in that? Debt is part of the income side of it. Debt is what's factored into determining how big of a loan you can get. So that's the income portion of it. Okay, so no matter if you made a lot of money, but if you had a lot of debt, that's going to affect your hey, I buying. get that question all the time. People who make over $100,000 a year, they'll say, well, I make six figures. Well, that's great, but if they're driving around with three car loans and student loans and another house payment, that can destroy everything. A thing that most buyers don't understand uh, when we're talking contracts is closing cost for a mortgage. What, what is that? What, what actually does closing cost go for? Closing costs are the fees and charges to actually close the transaction. The great thing about what, what we do in my industry is the customers don't really get charged lender fees or title or escrow fees, and those are the closing costs. Those happen at the closing. And a lot of times with a good real estate agent, they can negotiate with the seller to have the seller cover those. Does a buyer have to pay for the appraisal? A buyer does have to pay for the appraisal. An appraiser is a third party involved in the transaction. They must be paid outside of whether or not the loan closes or not. So that's a third party fee. Appraisals today generally, they're about four or $500 or so, and the buyer does have to pay for that. So that's gonna be some of those costs that they're gonna need. That's some front. of those costs, some of that money. Like I said, they need credit income and money. Money is used to cover some of those fees. So really, is there any no money down scenarios anymore? There's definitely VA loans and USD loans are zero down. Um, outside of that, for conventional or FHA, you do need to have a down payment. Do you still need closing costs and appraisal costs? Closing costs are charged on every single transaction. It depends on how big or how small the transaction might be, but there's always fees charged. So you still need some money coming in to- No question open. about it. You need something to work with. There's no question. Okay. But it's still very affordable at this point. 
there's no, nothing beats home ownership. Owning a home is not always good and renting is not always necessarily bad, but I don't think anything compares to home ownership. That's one of the questions I get asked often is people will say that, well, I don't have the money, but my father or my mother or my aunt or grandmother has the money. Are they able to get gift money and put that into the transaction? Great question. Absolutely, yes. All of the money could be gifted in regards to the down payment on the loan or even the closing costs. And a lot of first time buyers do get gifts from family members towards that. It's a great way to get money. They just can't be loans. They cannot be loans. That's okay. correct. It cannot be a loan. It has to be a gift. Great. Gosh, thanks for coming in today and talking about mortgages and answering some of our questions. Well, I appreciate the opportunity and thank you again. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for tuning in to one of our positive transaction videos and stay tuned for our next one.